Hi, and welcome to Fairview Range Focus. Uh, I'm David Hall, Chief Administrative Officer for Fairview Range. And today we're going to talk about home care and hospice, and uh, I am happy to uh, welcome Dr. Jeffrey Copeman, who is a board-certified hospice and palliative care physician, and Gus Christie, who is home care and hospice uh, RN, and both work uh, within Fairview Range. So thanks for joining me today. You're welcome. Um, it be fun to talk a little bit about home care and hospice. I think that's something that's an area that's been really growing a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. Certainly, I um, um, think that's occurring in our area, too. So maybe first start a little about, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and Dr. Copeman, if you'd be so kind, sure. tell us about uh, who you are and uh, what you do. Yeah. I'm Jeff Coleman, and I'm a family. I'm trained in family practice. I've been with uh, Masaba Clinic now Fairview Range for 23 years. Um, I've been the medical director of hospice for approximately 20 years. Um, I became board certified about three years ago in hospice and palliative medicine. I've always had an interest in that, and more recently, I became uh, a certified hospice medical director, which is a national certification for those that uh, are part of hospice. Um, I've always had an interest in geriatrics and also as an interest in hospice and a lot of that range uh, became an interest of mine due to some personal circumstances that happened and I felt I could use my skills and talents to help those who are at end of life. Mm -hmm. And so board certified, does that mean mm -hmm. there's, there's an actual board or test or Yeah, there, there, there is a test and what, what I had to do is I did what's called the experiential mode is where I had to turn in um, applications, I had to turn in cases and I had to sit for um, uh, eight hour exam. Okay, eight hours. Yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> I bet it was. <laughs> well, we're glad you were able Slept to get through all that night. <laughs> okay, good, good. And Gus, tell us about yourself. Um, I am a nurse for, I became a nurse in 2006. Okay. And I worked on the med surge floor at the hospital for a little bit, and then I have been working with home care and hospice for about eight years. Okay. So, and before I was a nurse, I was an athletic trainer and I worked in Crosby, Minnesota. Oh, neat. Yeah. Okay. Was, so, you, have you seen a big difference between home care nursing and hospital nursing? A lot of differences. Okay. <laughs> um, you, you work a lot by yourself in home care. Yeah, you yeah. have to do a lot of um, communicating with doctors over the phone and faxing and that sort of thing. Um, you, and you just have such a wide area. and so. A, different patients that you see in one day, mm -hmm. you know, as compared to a med surge floor. So, mm -hmm. yeah, no. very different, but both great jobs. Yeah, so. good, good. Well, I know in, in hospital environments, you really have a whole, a lot of team players, a yes, lot of resources. Yes, yeah, whereas, close at hand. Yeah, right. exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And you have a team that's on home care, but not quite as readily available, probably. Right, right, right. Okay. So, um, talk a little bit about uh, home care with regards to types of services, uh, types of, um, uh, services you might provide patients. Can you describe that a little bit about that? For yeah, us? we see pa we see patients um, when they come home from the hospital or from the nursing home, um, or after a doctor visit, and it's usually something that's happened that's um, acute in nature. Um, and we do some we teach them how to manage their congestive heart failure, respiratory illnesses, diabetes, wound care, IV medication, um, medication management. You know, and try to teach them how to live at home safer, longer, um, and try to work with them with that and mm -hmm. make, try to keep them healthy and out of the hospital. Mm -hmm. That's our goal. Okay. So the insurance companies, um, you have to follow guidelines for home care, um, and there's lots of different insurance companies out there, so we work with them and uh, figure out what we can do for them. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the care that is provided is covered by some form of insurance? Yes, okay. many insurances pay for some form of home care. There may be a deductible involved um, and you may have to actually be homebound you know for most of our services and mm -hmm. we have nurses, we have social workers available, home health aides, uh, we have telemonitoring where we can monitor their vitals in the home and don't have to necessarily make visits on a daily basis. Um, uh, volunteers and uh, yeah, that's about it for home health okay. <laughs> for home care. Okay, so there's a lot of different. Yeah, positions hospice or goals has different or... um, services that are available. So okay, okay, and um, so maybe we can speak a little bit because you've described home care. So maybe Dr. Coltman, in, in regards to hospice, sure. What kind of services do you see occurring there that are in the home? 
Well, the biggest thing is that to find out if somebody really qualifies for hospice. And I, I guess I'll start with just saying what hospice is. Yeah, please. And what we do is basically our goal is that there comes a point in a person's illness that there's something that we can't cure. Mm. And it's terminal. And when that happens, um, that's when hospice becomes involved. The majority of our, our, our patients are on Medicare and they have what's called the Medicare hospice benefit. Now in order to qualify for that, it has to be determined by two physicians, uh, your primary and usually myself, that you have a life expectancy of six months or less. And so what we do as far as hospice services go, we focus not so much on cure, but, uh, but as um, for symptom control, knowing that death is coming. Mm -hmm. Our hospice is not, it's not a place, it's, 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 it's a team. And our hospice team is composed of various specialties. Um, we have hospice nursing, we have a medical director, uh, we have pharmacy, we have chaplain, social work, home health aides, um, and if I'm forgetting anybody, help me. Volunteers. And, and our, I guess, very important, our hospice volunteers. Sure. And we provide those services in a variety of places. Um, most commonly, uh, patients prefer to die at home, and so we do everything that we can to, to provide services in the home. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not possible. Um, we provide services in several nursing homes. We provide services in group homes and in some assisted living facilities. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, and, and, and one of the things that sometimes um, the public is confused about is that hospice being a place and that it's 24 hour care. And really that's not what we do. We try to provide it in a different environment and not as a hospice place but we have somebody available 24 seven and that's what's really important because issues can arise any time of day or night and knowing that there's somebody available that can help out at any time is very comforting. Okay, so uh, home care uh, has changed a lot over the years and, and uh, um, I was just wondering if you can speak to that. I mean, I, I know within the hospital environment, healthcare has changed a lot and mm -hmm. I, I don't doubt that it's a, that's occurred in, in home healthcare as well. Have you seen a lot of changes over the years uh, in the type of care or the level of care or the level of acuity of patients? Well, I've only worked there for eight years. Okay. <laughs> so, <Only. laughs> well, and, um, but it has, I mean, we see a lot of patients who are very ill. I mean, they don't stay in the hospital as long, so yeah. we do a lot of things that, like IV medications at home now, we can do that, and that's a great thing that mm -hmm. you don't have to stay in the hospital just to get, mm -hmm. you know, <clears throat> IV medication twice a day. So we do that at home. and. Um, it, it does seem that we can manage people more, better at home, you know, with their medications and symptoms man mm -hmm. symptom management, teaching them what to look for when they need a change or when they need to call, mm -hmm. you know, their doctor. We can try to help work that out with them so mm -hmm. they're not having to go into the ER as often and um, stay at the hospital as often. We try to catch things before they need to go there. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting because so. I think that's one of the things that I've heard, I think, with this in the hospital environment is that there is such a push to get people discharged mm -hmm. as quickly as possible. Yeah. It is the most expensive place to provide care mm -hmm. in a hospital environment. Just uh, the, the structure uh, that is built and the resources there, it's very expensive. Yeah. And the fact that home care is available that for people to go to, I think it seems like some patients, families, are kind of intimidated by that idea of getting discharged quickly and then going home and thinking, yeah. well, what do I do now? I'm, maybe I'm not quite ready, but yeah. so it sounds like that's uh, yeah, a resource. Yeah, and people know themselves the best. Yeah. They know that, oh, my legs are bigger than usual or I'm not mm -hmm. breathing as good, so I need to, you know, call somebody and, mm -hmm. you know, we are available to, you know, with the nurse 24 hours a day, so they right. can call and say, hey, what's, I, I have this, what's going on? And right. Right. try to help them out that way. Right. So. So, Dr. Copeland, have you seen changes as well? You've yeah. been in for a little bit longer. I have. I've yeah. been here for quite some time and yeah. I've been on both sides. I have <laughs> done hospital for quite some time and now I don't do that anymore. But yeah, I mean, I see that the, the, the big push is um, to try to get, keep people at home as long as they can and to reduce the amount of hospitalizations because I agree it is a very, very expensive for things that with good home care mm -hmm. can be done there. And, and a lot of our home care actually is preventive. It's trying to prevent people from coming back to the hospital mm -hmm. and making sure that everything is taken care of at home. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I've heard reference to private duty and skilled care. <laughs> and I think that sometimes can be confusing to people. Can you help it us? Can be, it what, can be. What, what's confusing. What is the, what Private are those? duty is, some, is um, services at home, homemaking, like somebody who comes in and helps you with um, vacuuming, cleaning your house, things that you uh, people can't do by, for themselves. Um, 
a lot of people live in assisted living places. It's kind of like having an assisted living, you know, somebody to help you in that instance in your home. We do that. Um, veterans Services pays for that sometimes, and state programs pays for that sometimes. Um, there are also med medication setups that nurses do, and that can be done, paid for privately, along with those other insurance companies. So, um, just to make again to make people try to stay in their house mm -hmm. longer, so they don't need to stay in facilities or, um, you know, have to go somewhere. And if you don't have family that is able to do that, right. these services can do that for right. you. So. Right. So that's more the private duty side. That's what the private duty side is, homemaking and just, and they're usually less visits. It's, okay. you know, once a week or once every other week or once okay. a month sometimes. So what's skilled? Skilled, skilled visits generally are more often and you have, you're more restricted in, you, you know, the services that they provide, like being homebound. And mm -hmm. you have to have a skilled need, like you have to have an illness that you need help managing. And is that care typically provided by a particular um, individual, the skilled care? The skilled care, we have skilled nurses. So it's typically who nurses? Who mostly, yep, who okay. do nurses, um, LPNs or RNs. Okay. Um, we have home health aides that go into skilled, if you have skilled nursing, you can go into house if they need help showering mm -hmm. or um, providing personal cares for them. On private duty, they can um, pay for somebody, a uh, home health aide to come in and help you with that if that's the kind of need that you have. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so it, there are different levels. Different levels, right. Is it necessary, I mean, if, if, if I needed care, is it necessary for me to understand, I mean, how do I know what level of care I need if I needed home care services? Well, how? if you call us and kind of say, you know, this is what I'm having trouble with, um, you know, what can I, what can I get? And uh, if for home care, generally the referral comes from a doctor, you have to have a face-to-face -face with your doctor before um, insurance pays for that. Private duty, not necessarily. Private duty, um, we don't necessarily have to have a, um, a, an order for it before we do it. Okay. But um, we talk to the doctors and we get, you know, work things out with the insurance company. So if it, it sounds, I mean, it sounds really comforting, I guess. I mean, as a family member, you could get connected to the home care yep. and not have to worry about, well, where do I fit here? Do I fit there? That right. You're yeah. going to figure that out yes. and be yes. able to place them where it's most appropriate right. to provide the care, that, the, the level of care that's necessary. Yep. Okay, good, good. Um, hospice, and one of the things I was going to, I wanted to ask, because I've heard this as well, is that it seems like a lot of people are referred into hospice um, sometimes in the very end stages mm -hmm. and sometimes maybe too late. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is there any truth to that or do you, do you find that um, that, that is a, a pattern at all or that it, you know, sometimes you feel like, gee, I wish we could have provided care sooner? I, you know, we see that quite often and oh. we, were, we were looking at that because a lot of times what, what happens is that um, there's a lot that goes through when somebody's, that, 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 that emotionally goes through when somebody's diagnosed with a terminal illness. Mm -hmm. There's some time to chew on that. Am I really terminal? Is there any other treatment that I can do? And sometimes what happens is that the disease is so rapidly progressive and all that time is spent trying to figure out um, that we're called in a little too late. Mm -hmm. um, as, as I talked about earlier, we have a whole variety of services that are available and it's best to be done early. Um, you know, uh, or like our chaplain services, our, our home health care, all that stuff is meant to be, and if, it's, if you're only on services for two to three days, mm -hmm. it's not maximizing what is available right. to you. Right. Um, so yeah, we see that, and so um, I, we've educated our physicians. Our hospital does a wonderful job that if people are diagnosed with terminals that they let us know early, and we do the assessment kind of like for home care, whether somebody might qualify for hospice. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, a lot of times our home care, they might qualify for that, and we're still, they're hooked into the system, the patients are. Right. And so that when, the, when they start to decline, then they'll call hospice in as kind of a transition okay. from home care. So it makes it probably an easy transition. Much they're already yes. in the, okay. and, and oftentimes it's the same nurse, and it okay. might be this, the same caregivers, just in, okay. a different, you know, just in a different setting. So. Okay. Also, I have I think I read um, about the hospice program that it was Medicare certified. Yep. What does that mean? That was a huge step because when I uh, was uh, the director way back in the mid '90s, um, we weren't Medicare certified, and what that meant is that our service was probably five to six people at any given time. Okay. The reason that we could not take care of Medicare patients was that we weren't certified by Medicare to be a hospice. Okay. And so we couldn't have Medicare patients, and you know on the range a lot of us are, and a lot of our patients are in Medicare. Mm -hmm. 
So, and it's a very, very rigorous thing to become Medicare certified. And so it was North Star Hospice at that time underwent all the underwent all the, the work, the paperwork, all the inspections, all the things to become Medicare certified about eight to ten years ago. Okay. Our service numbers went from five to six to we average anywhere between I would say sixteen to thirty okay. patients at any Big given jump, time. Yeah. On just hospice. And so that was a huge service to the community and mm -hmm. something that we're very proud of because mm -hmm. we're able to, 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 to do that. Mm -hmm. Being Medicare certified, we're under a very rigorous um, review all the time. They do, they do their surveys and there's a lot of reporting that we have to do to maintain that certification by Medicare. <clears throat> but it's a good thing. Right. Okay, good, good. Um, we live in northern Minnesota. There's a, layout, a lot of geography. There's a lot of miles. There's mm -hmm. a lot of homes that live w way out. Um, Gus, what, can you help us understand what kind of areas do you cover? How far do you go? Uh, from our Hibbing office, we go about 30 to 40 miles away from our Hibbing office. We also have nurses in the Quad Cities area um, that work over generally in that area, and we also have an office in I Falls. So, uh, about the same range up there, 30 to 40 miles. Um, sometimes you can live, you know, 25 miles away, but it takes 40 minutes to get there, so it kind of have a little play there, but okay. somewhere like that. Okay, so do you hire people in other communities then to, to service those areas as well? Mostly, if we have nurses, like I said, that live over in the Virginia Eveleth area, we try to keep them over there. There's a couple that um, actually just stay over there and don't office, often come to our office in Hibbing um, unless they're on call and they have to come in or do something particular, but most of them work out of the office in Hibbing. We have about 20 nurses, so. Um, yeah, we and then we kind of come together in the morning and then spread out okay. throughout the day. So <laughs> yeah, and how, how many? I've heard the number, but I forget how many nurses do you have on staff approximately? About you, twenty. Okay, so that's pretty pretty a, good a size. Pretty group. good number, and we've grown just in the yeah. last four to five years to that amount. So. Yeah. So and you have somebody that works um, like I mean, or is available or on call like twenty four seven. Twenty four right? hours a day, seven days a week. We have somebody on call during the day. Um, there's always somebody in the office, there's always a nurse in the office to take calls, and then after hours we have a carrier pager for somebody who needs it. Okay. Anything, so. so is there a different nurse for hospice, or uh, it's on call? No, or there's one. Same. Yep. Okay, so they, they We're all kind of trained, and you know, we work very good together, so if there's a problem, it's, you know, you can call somebody else up. And, okay. Yeah. So um, just again to make sure people understand this, from a referral standpoint, it sounds like that typically it begins with their um, family physician mm -hmm. as far as uh, identifying that they might need services? Or family. Or family. Or, okay. ho or hospi hospital nurses, hospital social workers. So we get referrals from a lot of different areas. Okay. So um, if, if someone contacts you and um, a physician orders needed, then you're able to contact the physician uh, on their behalf or? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, good. Now, um, you also mentioned about palliative care, mm -hmm. so maybe we could take a, a few minutes and talk. I know it's, it sounds like it's a, a new program that you're looking at. Maybe you could help us understand a little bit about that. Sure. You know, what, what palliative care is, and I just will, will clarify, because it's, it's different than hospice. You know, when, when, when we look at someone who is terminal, we look, do they have six months or less to live? That's someone that probably would qualify or would benefit from hospice services. When we look at someone that has a terminal illness that may be undergoing active treatment or having other things, if we think that the patient may have two years or less to live, that's palliative care. Hospice is part of palliative care, but palliative care is not hospice. They're two different things, so it's okay. kind of a continuum. What we've seen is that there's a lot of the same needs um, that, uh, that are in palliative care patients, those that may not be six months less, or, that may not have six months or left to live, that are needed. And so nursing services, um, chaplain services, 24-7. Um, and so what we're trying to do is focus on palliative care. And so we're developing a program called the Palliative Care Program where we admit patients. We have a small number right now beginning in June where we focus on their end of life needs. They may be still be undergoing treatment for their illness. Uh, they may be undergoing chemotherapy, radiation therapy, but the prognosis is probably less than two years. That way we can use our services to help that transition as best we can to make sure that all their needs are met. Pain, um, symptom control, um, psychosocial goals, all that kind of stuff that, that, that we see in hospice, 
but, uh, but earlier. Okay. So that, and you said, made it sound like a, that one can transi transitions into the yes, other? Yes, absolutely. And, and if somebody is a palliative care patient, I would suspect um, that they most likely will transition into hospice at some point in their illness. Okay. Because it's progressive. Okay. And so this is, a, you said, a pilot program. Yeah. Um, hopeful it's something that proves yeah. worthwhile or, or, or yep. value added. Yeah, because the palliative care can be can be done in a different place too. Right now we're looking at more of home palliative care okay. where our staff goes out to their home. Um, but eventually we would like to have an inpatient palliative care. Um, we want to get a consulting team where if someone is, is very sick and has a life limiting illness that we get involved in the hospital to help with symptom control, to help get the transition to home uh, as smooth as we can. So we have, we have some goals and we have to start early and that's why we're doing now with home-based palliative care okay. as a start. Yeah, well, it sounds like a great program yeah. and, a, and a, a great fit within that department. Yeah, yeah, and when you look at things uh, um, with palliative care, because there's a lot of unnecessary hospitalizations, a lot of intensive care unit intubation, things that are done that can be very, very expensive that may not have been necessary because the underlying illness is terminal. Mm -hmm. Because at that point, we're not really prolonging life, but we're prolonging death and may not be necessary mm -hmm. and uses uh, resources that could be better served for the more acute patient. I know from personal experience, both my parents were in hospice programs, that um, the healthcare world is just so complicated. And I think for those that are on the outside not work within that, I think that's one of the greatest benefits is just helping to navigate. Absolutely. Where do you go? Mm -hmm. what, what do these terms mean? And how, you know, how do I access services? So mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's a great program. Um, it's a great service to our community. That's, yeah. that's really wonderful. Gus, I wanted to ask you, because I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, you just moved offices. <laughs> to, to a new location. That we did. Yeah, and, and tell us where that's at for those that might be interested it's to know. It's in the, um, the mall, the Super One Mall, but it's our office. You can only enter it from the parking lot that faces the hospital. Okay. So if you want to come in, um, just park down in the parking lot and our door is right from the outside. Right, so. right, yeah, it's mm -hmm. a beautiful. It's a beautiful new office. Yeah, it's a beautiful new office. <laughs> and I know that, um, uh, just think of it, there's a couple services I think that some people come there for. Uh, you have a, a foot care clinic? Yep, they right? do foot care and toenail care. Yep, and I think they do that once a week, once or twice a week. Okay. The LPNs do that. Um, in our office, we also have physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy that we offer for people at home. So that is something else that we do with people who have, um, you know, surgery, and we can do home care for physical therapy also. So. Mm -hmm. um, Okay. Yeah, Great. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a it's a beautiful new office, so I uh, it'd be nice for uh, those who are interested. They can stop by and uh, take we a look. We have a window and, to the outside. Yeah, it's that's right. That's right. <laughs> well, thank you both. Uh, we're about out of time, and uh, uh, home health care and hospice is a, just an integral part of of health care, and uh, we're very fortunate in our community to have those services available. So, yeah. thank you to each of you for for what you do and for your contribution to. Uh, the, the well-being of others, uh, um, it's, it's an honorable and noble profession and uh, it's very needed uh, in our community. So thank you both for joining me today and, and uh, thank you for, for watching and uh, hopefully it was something interesting to you to learn a little bit more about home care and hospice, a, a very important part of health care. So um, thank you again to Dr. Copeman and to Gus uh, for joining me today and again thanks for watching Fairview Range Focus and watch next month for another program. Thank you and be well. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Dr. Copeland. Pleasure. Thank you. Hibbing Public Access Television would like to thank U.S. Bank for providing us with studio space.